your Catholic Drive Time with Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. Praise be to Jesus Christ in all things. Saint Vitalis of Gaza, pray for us. Born in the 6th century, uh, but he was a hermit, he was a monk in the Gaza region. Um, but at 60 years old, he felt the call to go to Alexandria, Egypt, a thriving city, one of the biggest in the, in the, uh, in the area. Now, he had a particular apostolate. He felt God was calling him to help to uh, save women from working in prostitution. And he had a very unique, let's just say, way of going about that. I'm going to try to be as PC here as I can, okay? But he worked as a day laborer. And he would earn the money as a laborer. He would then use the money to uh, to uh, hire the, an opportunity to speak with these women. And he would spend the night with them in prayer. For those that would listen, he would give them the money, but he would have to pray with them. And he would try to help them come out of that lifestyle. Whatever their challenges were, whatever you know circumstances, he would try to help them find ways of overcoming that. But it was through the power of prayer. That and, uh, and his sacrifice for these women that he was able to, in many cases, bring many of these ladies out of this lifestyle. Uh, however, there were many uh, accusations lobbied against him because he would not let these ladies say or share what they did, right? So he, was, he didn't want them just telling because he wanted the opportunity to meet these new women, to find these other ladies and to help those ladies too. So he didn't want them sharing amongst each other what actually occurred. So they weren't allowed to say, hey, we were praying, we were, you know, we were, uh, you know, conversing about the gospel, about our Lord, none of that. So there were lots of accusations and charges were levied against him. But in every case, he was found innocent of all of these charges. Now, uh, he was able to reach, some say, every single lady in the city of Alexandria before he was, uh, he, before he died. In fact, in 625 AD, he was attacked by a gentleman working in that business with a knife. And he, he, was, he didn't want this person meddling in his business and, and sort of disrupting the flow of economy, let's say. Kind of reminded me a little bit of St. Paul who cast out the demon from the fortune teller and it upset everything, right? It ruined the whole economy. Well, something similar happened here with St. Vitalis of Gaza. He was attacked with a knife. Now, he did make it back to his hut and he apparently died peacefully in prayer. Uh, now, he did write one thing that I think is very pertinent to our times of darkness. He says, Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. St. Vitalis of Gaza, pray for us. Now the gospel, it comes to you from Mark chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier, mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus Christ in all things. The Venerable Bede said, None but God can bestow the Holy Ghost. And I think that should be a realization. And it was St. Gregory the Great who said, John the Baptist couldn't even begin to proclaim the depths of the actual mystery with which he was heralding, that of the Trinity, because it's God the Father's voice, it's God the Son being baptized, and it's God the Holy Ghost who descends like a dove, and all three are present there. The power of that should shake you to your boots, because it is the kingdom of God that is at hand. And it re we realize in the process that we are called to something greater. We aren't called to this world. We are passing through this world. So as much as we want to hold on, white-knuckle this thing, and hold on as tight as we can to what we have, and just we, we need this thing to work the way we need it to work, and, and we want things to go back to, quote, normal, unquote, and, and just everything be fine. The reality is that's not our mission, and that's not our calling. 
Our calling is to make it to heaven and to, to bring as many people as possible with us. And, uh, and I think John the Baptist realizes the, the gravity of what he is actually proclaiming here, the Holy Trinity itself, the kingdom of God itself. It's, it's a powerful uh, instance here. Uh, Adrian, what did you get? Yeah, so I thought the, uh, the interesting point here for me was St. Thomas notes that at the baptism of our Lord, something very interesting happens. The descent of the Holy Ghost, the, a dove descends upon our Lord. Now, we know that our Lord, uh, the, the Holy Spirit is not uh, a dove. It's not like, so you're not going to, if you grab a random dove off the street, it's not going to be the Holy Ghost. But the, our Lord decided to appear as the Holy Ghost and descend upon our Lord. Uh, why is that? Because uh, St. Thomas notes that, at the time, people were very confused. They thought that uh, St. John the Baptist was the Messiah. They were convinced that this was uh, that this was true. Even after he would say it over and over again, they would uh, tell him that he would say, "No, no, no, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the Messiah. I'm preparing the way for the Messiah." They would did they would uh, have that happen in that way. And so uh, our Lord has the Holy Ghost to send upon him as a dove to have no confusion that when God the Father opens up the skies and says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, there would be no confusion that he's referring to Jesus Christ and not uh, John the Baptist. Amen. Praise be to God. I just What an opportunity we have today. No matter the difficulties and struggles that we all face, uh, the scandals, whether they're in the church or without the church, uh, or just the fact that we have the most, probably the most divided nation in, our, in the history since the Civil War, well, we still have an opportunity to proclaim the good, the true, and the beautiful in our life today and help to, uh, to pe- other people to realize that the kingdom of God is at hand, and we must make decisions. We must make choices to live our life according to that, to have great peace, peace in our hearts that no matter what, we are sojourners on the way to heaven. But uh, all right, so speaking of great voices coming from this guy, 